Hello, everybody out there. It's Masterpiece Theater. Today, subject is going to be who makes the best air rifle out there. Okay, seriously, I get this question more than anything else, um, at least five times a week. Bob, come on, Mr. Hollow Point. You know everybody who makes the best one. You can tell me. I won't tell anybody who makes the best gun. Come on, you can tell me what's your favorite. What's your favorite? Guys, that's a loaded question. And today I'm going to explain why. Because everybody makes a quality air rifle. But not every air rifle fits everybody's household. And I will do my best to explain why on today's episode of Masterpiece Theater. <laughs> so with that being said, I will go over the points that over the past 15 years, working in my little peedly brain is what I try to tell folks when they ask me who makes the best air rifle. So what we'll do is I'll try to put the points up here on the old note paper and hopefully this will help you out. I don't want to step on toes. I'm not trying to burn bridges. But you'll see as we go through why that's a very difficult question on who makes the very best air rifle. So follow along, will you? Oh, P.S. There will not be shooting in this video. So follow with me on who makes the best air rifle. Okay. And we will try to cover these points. And I'll put them up here as we go along. Okay, the first thing I ask guys when they say who makes the best what, my first question is air source or air supply, number one. Okay, doesn't make a difference how much money you have. If you don't have a way to fill the gun, you're SOL, okay, and follow my reasoning. Regardless of how rich you are, Mr. Howell, let's say you decide to get an extreme with a 4,500 PSI fill, okay? You live in Alaska. You live in the Hawaiian Islands. You live in Fiji someplace where you don't have access to get a carbon fiber tank filled all the time. You will not be pumping 4,500 PSI with a hand pump. Even though it says 5,000 PSI fill, unless you're the Hulk or Thor, it's not going to happen. I'm being realistic. Okay, I'm a guy with asthma. Even when guns were 3,000 PSI fill, by the time I got down to 3,000, I was already hitting the inhaler 37 times like Urkel. Okay, so let's be honest. Regardless of how much money you have, if you don't have a carbon fiber tank, carbon fiber tank, and a way to get that filled on a regular basis, a 4,500 PSI fill is going to be hard for you, regardless of who builds the gun. Okay, I don't care who builds the gun. These are the facts. If you're using a hand pump, you're going to be limited to a 3,000 PSI fill. Okay, and what does that leave you out in today's market? You have the options of Texans, uh, the Korean guns. Uh, there's some of the other ones where you could alter and change the spring in there. You can take a 4,500 PSI gun, change the hammer spring, bring your fill pressure down to 3,000 PSI or 2,500, your choice. But you need to know this going in, okay? If you're doing a float plane and you're flying someplace, you can't take a carbon fiber tank. You gotta have a hand pump. So think about that. I don't care how much money you have. The air supply is gonna be number one, okay? Keep that in your brain pan. Okay. Number two on my questions when you ask me who makes the best what? Price. So we've talked about air, now price. This is where the Howells come in. Okay, and G Mr. and Mrs. Howell. All right, or Jed Clampett. Say, oh, price is no option, Mr. Hollow Point. I don't care what we're paying. Well, if price is no option, I got some classic one-ups, okay? that I'll sell you for $5,000. Or how about an old Gary Barnes custom one of a kind? Or maybe go from England and get yourself a Beaumont. You know, you're talking five to $7,000. Well, 
oh, that's way too much money. Well, don't tell me price is not an option when price clearly is an option, okay? So work within your budget. Air rifles can start with the Korean stuff around $600 to the top of the line stuff, which is three to $5,000. So you have to work within your budget. So don't say and say, hey, what, what, you know, what's the best? M money's no object. Money is an object. Because usually when I drop the $5,000 question mark, all of a sudden the phone gets really quiet. Hello? Hello? McFly, can you hear me? Click, 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 click. Hello? So price is, price is truly a subject. Okay, on my list of questionnaire, number three, availability. What does that mean? That means... I don't care what it is, just because you want it doesn't mean it's available. Now this is a little bit different than it was 10, 15 years ago. When I first got into this, the only big bore out there was either the Korean stuff, like the 909 or the Dragon, or Dennis Quackenbush. That was it. You didn't have other option. Then Jack Haley came along, Big Bore Bob was doing his thing. Then Dan McVeigh got into it with XP air guns, and then eventually uh, Allen and Brent with Extreme Big Bore, and then now the other companies are getting. Texan finally came in. So over this progression, things have changed a little bit, but what has not changed is availability. What is available right now? Doesn't make a difference if you've got plenty of air, plenty of cash. If all the guns are on back order, you still have no rifle. So now you have to look at the used market. Certain air rifles hold their value better than gold. And in, like Quackenbush. You got a Quackenbush 457. That baby will continually hold its price forever. Okay? Forever. So, with that being said, what's available? Okay, oh man, hunting season's right around the corner. Alright, this is August. You want to get a gun set up. For, you know, September, October, what's available? I don't know. You have to go to the big stores and see what's out there or look in on the classified. So you, it doesn't make a difference if you poor planning and you're behind the scenes, behind schedule, you're not going to have an air gun. And the one thing that irritates me more than anything in this business is when you order an air rifle and they tell you it's going to be eight weeks and it turns out to be six friggin to ten months that's BS and it shouldn't be accepted I'm telling you that straight up right now that's garbage okay we you do better than that this is America we should do much better than that there's no sense you having your whole hunting trip blown you've planned a year in advance because some ass clown can't get off his couch and do his job that he promised you okay that's a point right there this is a consumer business Keep an eye on that. Tell you it should be available. It should be available. So, number three, availability. Okay. On my list, number four, caliber size. Know what you need to hunt in the state you live in. Okay. Some guys want to get a 257 or a 357 or whatever it is. Know what is the base minimum from where you live. A lot of states, it's a 35 caliber. Other states, it's a 40 caliber. Some states have a foot-pound regulation. You need to know what's going on. You don't want to be ordering a 357 when you need to have 1,200 foot-pound minimum to hunt in your state. Or you need to have a certain this or a certain that. Know what you're looking for. I personally like big boars. I like big lead because... It never fails. If the animal is walking, it's going to move. My bullet placement is not going to be exact. So I'd rather have a big knocking down hunk of monster lead than an itty bitty fast moving teeny tiny that you got to pierce right between them two ribs to get right in and take out that left ventricle. Okay. I think a lot of guys hunt with way too light ammunition because for whatever, that's the flavor of the month. And I'll tell you now, you can disagree with me all you want because it's a free country. God bless America. If you're shooting a magazine-fed gun 
It is not meant for big, big lead, and it's not meant for big game. There, I said it. If you hate me, I don't care. Leave the comments in the towel section. But if you want real monster lead, you're never going to get 500 foot-pounds with a rotary repeater. I don't care. It's not going to happen. you got to have a big old monster single shot. Something that you can put a huge honking piece of lead in there. I'm talking three quarters of an inch long. Okay? Not this little itty bitty teeny tiny in-gen pellet stuff. Pellets are meant for mid-sized critters and under. Bullets are meant for man-sized animals. Okay? So caliber size. Keep an eye on that. Just because something's inexpensive or it's on sale doesn't mean it's going to suit your needs. Number five in my video of why I'm the greatest, extra stuff. Your average Korean big bore out of the factory, 3,000 PSI, three shots. Okay, single shot, nothing wrong with that. Nothing whatsoever. Maximum foot-pounds of energy, 250 maybe. Okay, XP air guns, high, low, and medium, three to six shots. You can get extended Picatinny rails. You can get camouflage. You can get all sorts of Cerakote options. Okay, you can get short barrel, long barrel. It's what you want because the guns are built per specification on what you want. That's what I call extra. With that being said, my usual wrapped up comment is an air rifle is like a pickup truck. It is a tool for a job. Only you can put out forest fires. Only you can decide if it's the right tool for the job. If you're just collecting guns, you're target shooting, you like to have a little of everything, you know, you like driving the whole gold-plated Lexus caravan SUV, and that's great. There's guns out there just for you. If you've got a family of six, you're living in a trailer home, and you're on a budget working at McDonald's, you're on a budget. You need to go with something that's low end. You don't have the money for all that other stuff. If you can find a low-end Dragon or a 909 used at a gun show for $400, that's excellent. Another $50 off Amazon now for a hand pump, guess what? $20 Weaver Scope, you know, for less than $600, you're going to be hunting this season. So it's a tool for a job. That's you know all I can tell you. Uh, do you need more shots if you're going to spend all day walking around? You may want to consider something like this that has, you know, Air Force that has five shots. So it's, it's, it's a tool for a job and only you can figure that out. Like I said, just like pickup trucks, you get an S10, you know, you get your F-150, 250, 350, 450, you got dualies, you got tractor diesel for the big loads. You need to figure it out. As long as the gun is built properly, shoots properly, and is accurate, it's a good gun. Okay, I get more guys knocking down deer with 909s that they've had for five and six years than I do anything else wrapped up. So again, it's not how much you've dumped into it. It's, is it accurate? Are you good with it? And you know where it hits. That's really the key thing. So I hope this kind of brings it into play for you on, you know, who makes the best air rifle. They're all good. It's just, some people like wood. Some people want nothing else but to curl up with a nice walnut stock. You're not going to get that on some brands because that's not how they are. Other guys don't care. Some guys want short guns because they're always hiking in the woods and can't, don't want to deal with a 57 inch gun. That's fine. It's whatever you're doing. If you're shooting less than 50 yards, at any at any big game, any day of the week for your entire life, get an 82 cal. There's no nuts. There's not a bigger brush buster than my 82, the old 20 millimeter cannon. But if you're shooting 75 to 100 yards, that's not the right tool for you. You're going to want something else. You need something super flat and super fast. You're going to go with a lower caliber, like a 40 or maybe the 357. If all you're shooting is coyotes and small game. Get yourself a 257. I mean, it's a tool for the job. Just get the right tool. But remember what I say. How are you going to get air? Okay? Got a lot of friends on the islands. 
They're still working hand pumps. So that's going to limit them on what they can get. Price. You can be rich all you want, but guess what? If it's not available, this isn't going to help you. Okay? Make sure you know your caliber size. Because some states are always changing and you don't want to be... It's better to be over than under. So hopefully, I haven't driven you crazy and you get a better understanding of where my frame of mind is when people say, hey, what's the best air rifle out there? Okay? With that being said, thanks for watching. Watch the next videos. Hope it's more exciting. And as always, if you slip me 100, I'll tell you the truth.